Before the episode starts, I wanted to mention that there is a poll you can vote on for the next character creator critique, and if there's a game you'd like to see that isn't on the list, you can add your own suggestions. Once a character creator has been critiqued, it will be removed from the list, so when voting be sure to check the CCC playlist to see if your game of choice has not been done yet. <laughs> I am playing the PC version of Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen, but from what I can tell, the character creator is identical to the vanilla version of the game. Uh, one thing that I think I should point out is that before the character creator, there is a tutorial level that you have to play through before you reach it, and that every time you want to make a new character from a new save, you have to play through the tutorial. I've been told that you can skip it by jumping off of a cliff and dying, which is a hilarious way to skip a tutorial, but if you want to remake your character for any reason, you have to either do that or pay some money in-game currency to an NPC for a one-time use item. You can change your character as much as you'd like once you beat the game and reach New Game Plus, but sometimes I don't personally want to have to wait that long. I don't want to have to beat the game before I can customize my character. Just wanted to bring that up in case you're like me and have to go through several iterations of your character before it's perfect. Now, as usual, you can be either male or female, and when you name your character, you actually have two names. One name that would work like anything else as it appears on your character page, on your saves, whatever. The second name is for is from a list of names that the game has provided you. And this is for anyone who has parental controls enabled in case they don't want to see anything naughty online. You do have a bunch of presets uh, for bodies and faces and a set of voices as well, a bunch of them. They actually vary quite a bit in uh, their tone. So if you listen to that one, it's much deeper compared to like that one, which is incredibly high-pitched. Once you pick those, you can move on to finer details. This includes uh, all external organs of the face, things like eyes, nose, mouth, ears. You can also change different parts and extremities of the body, like uh, the height, weight, arms, legs, as well as uh, the, the kind of posture of your character. So if you would uh, like them to be hunched over or pump their chest out, you can do that. And of course, additional options like uh, face accessories like scars and freckles and uh, wrinkles, makeup, the usual. Most of these options have additional submenus and sliders to make more fine tuning. And of course, this game has a companion creator for the pawn system that is identical to the character creator. So, What's bad about it? The most immediate flaw in this character creator is the quality of the character and their assets on a technical level. Now, I said on a technical level, this is not talking about aesthetics of the game or uh, the art design. The character does not look very good. You can see there that the hair quality is ooh, very, very rough. The texture resolution on the skin, the clothes, and the hair are ugly. I can practically count how many pixels are there. Look, look at that. Ugh. Even the shadows have some kind of weird coloring to them. And also some minor things with the menu. We still have the Insta Preview problem with hovering over the selection. We'll instantly preview it on the character, making comparisons difficult. And I don't know why, but for some reason, whenever you pick colors, there's a row of just gray boxes that don't really do anything, and I, for the life of me, cannot figure out why they're there or what they do, if anything. I, I can't select them, but why are they here? I don't understand. And, uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's pretty much all I have bad to say about this character creator. So what does it do good? Firstly, although the menus do suffer from the Insta Preview problem, it's only when selecting with a keyboard or with a controller. If you use the mouse, you can actually scroll through the options and then select them afterwards, which is great, but I'm only giving it half credit because it is exclusive to the mouse. And making comparisons is still difficult if you're only using a keyboard or if you're using a controller, because with a controller you obviously don't get a cursor. It is nice though and makes comparisons much easier when you have a mouse. Secondly, you can change the character's body to a ludicrous degree. You can change not only their weight, but their height as well. 
And it's not just by a few centimeters either. I mean, like, seriously, look, the tallest option is nearly twice the height of the shortest option. And guess what? If you don't think your character's big enough, the individual body parts options give you even more to work with. Sure, this may be the maximum I can go on the weight slider, but if I go to the torso, I can make the shoulders even wider. Or if I go to the legs, I can change how tall the torso is or how big the legs are. I mean, seriously. Look at those hips. They don't lie. I mean, they're so truthful, I'm afraid they're about to spill government secrets. And the stance option is just the frosting on this already delicious body cake. This is one of the best body options in video games I've ever had the pleasure to play with. You just have so much customization in just how specific you want to get with how your character looks. Look, I can give them legitimate pear-shaped body. Look at that. That's more than so many games give you. Third, there are so many options. The amount of choices you have for most parts of the face is just ridiculous. You have a range of about 30 to 40 choices to pick from for most of the face. There's pretty much everything you could think of. You even get ethnic hairstyles like dreadlocks, which is always cool. Take that, Monster Hunter. And it would be just good enough that the game allows you this many choices to choose from for this many parts of the character, but the fact that you can go in and make additional adjustments as well is just incredible. Pretty much everything has its own fine adjustment sliders to tune things even more. You get nose size, eye spacing, mouth position, it's just so so nice to have this much control over your character's face. And not just in the sense that you're morphing parts that feel like you shouldn't be able to, like Dark Souls. Now I did say that the character looks bad on a technical level, but on an artistic level, it overall looks very nice. Just like Monster Hunter, you're capable of making a quote-unquote ugly character, not in the sense that, like Dark Souls, where it's just ugly because it's a mass of flesh that's gone through some horrifying radioactive mutation, but in the sense that you can make a character that still looks human but is not necessarily conventionally attractive, like this old lady right here. This is my favorite preset because it, it really shows just how capable this character creator is. And finally, the pawn system means you get to create a companion character, so gold star there. But the best thing is that this right here is the pawn creator that you've been looking at. It's identical to the player character creator. So if you want to make a twin, as long as you remember to write down the options that you picked for your character, you can make a doppelganger as your pawn. You can make your friends and family as your pawn. This means you get to have your own personal character cake and eat it too, in the sense that you have a second character to work with. Conclusion. Pretty much every face and body option you can imagine is here. The quality of the model is not one of the most impressive out there, but the character creator itself most definitely is. This has been Character Creator Critique. Be sure to vote for which creator you'd like to see next, and I'll see you then. Music